y'all I'm, I'm gonna make some moonshine today we're gonna uh, use some uh, amylase I've had a lot of people asking me to do this for a while let's do it instead of using uh, malted barley two row six row we're gonna use high temperature amylase I see a lot of people just using one and it's pretty pointless I know that you could watch it work you take in and gelatinize in your corn and then you're adding a high temperature amylase and it's liquefying but you're making dextrin after you make the dextrin you need to convert it to glucose you do that with the beta which you could call it gluco amylase um, I have seb star here high temperature amylase then I have the seb star uh, gluco amylase I'll show you how both these work there's lots of things that are confusing here like uh, the word dextrin because you've probably heard the word dextrose they're two totally different things dextrose just means corn sugar um, glucose pretty much means sugar so the same thing glucose and dextrose are pretty much the same exact thing it's fermentable sugar now dextrins which is what you create with this you take you, you gelatinize your corn and then you turn that gelatinized corn which is a carbohydrate into dextrin you take that dextrin it's not very friendly to yeast at that point yeast really don't like dextrins it's really not very fermentable so you use this and you take that dextrin and you turn it into glucose um, there's lots of big words uh, like saccharification that's just the process of using this saccharification means you are taking dextrin and turning it into glucose or a monosaccharide which a monosaccharide is is means you are making a fermentable sugar there's multiple fermentable sugars and there's multiple unfermentable sugars and that's basically it it sounds real difficult it's because all the words sound alike I get it uh, it hurt my brain learning it too <laughs> but I figured I'd lay it out there and explain some of it to you we're going to cook a uh, 20 gallon mash we're going to use this uh, I think you're supposed to use uh, milliliter per every gallon I'm just gonna dump shit in because that's what I do I'm gonna use more than I need because I'm ready to buy some new I've had this a while I've used it twice already I got a buddy that sells uh, sells this now um, his name's moonshine Shua and then prohibition 1922 guys they got something called a uh, broken bones distillery if you want to buy some they sell it for the same price as said star you can buy whichever you want I'll put a link to their website and I'll put a link to this so you just choose um, you know high temperature amylase is pretty awesome let's make a match all right I got 20 pounds of cracked corn real fine it's yellow dent that's heirloom yellow dent corn don't put it in the pot add five gallons of water All right, once you got your water and your corn in there, you want to heat it up. But you want to keep it stirred the entire time until it's about as thick as making cornbread. Thick as oatmeal, whatever you want to call it. You want to keep it stirred because you don't want it to scorch. I made this thing right here so I ain't got to stand here and stir it the entire time. You want it about that thick, right there. See how thick it is? 
All right, I'm about to add my amylase. Finish her off. Watch it get thin. continue to get thinner and thinner so just let it cool down now let it cool down it's only been a couple minutes look how thin it is I'm gonna go ahead and cool it down with some water spray everything off the sides Let it cool down the rest of the way. I'll show you the next step. All right, now I'm gonna dump my corn into my trash can. Time to add the glucoamylase. Stir it up. Stir it up. So I had to put in about 18 pounds of sugar to get my gravity at 1.080. Stirred it up. It's uh, it's ready. Now I just got to add the yeast. Had I not done the uh, 
had I not been using corn and converting that corn into sugar, I would have needed 40 pounds of sugar. So I'm using less than half the amount of sugar it takes. Now I just need to add yeast. I sprinkled a little bit of this yeast energizer in there. Just a little sprinkle. Stirred it up. Now I'm going to sprinkle some of this yeast nutrient in there. sprinkle some yeast in here. Put a lid on it. Wait about a week until she's done. Mash is ready. Let's take this pond pump, put it in our beautiful still. Copperstillco.com. Alright, so I crank my heat on, and what I do is I crank it all the way up to where it's as high as it'll go until this thermometer says it starts to get close to 200, say like 175. A lot of people don't run this way. I do. I'm kind of a, I consider myself a professional, but I'm not going to wait around for hours and hours to heat up. I've got this uh, heating element right here. Ran to this SCR box. And then I got the SCR box plugged into a 220 outlet. It's, it's the greatest. I'm telling you, it's awesome. But uh, look at that beautiful Copper Steel Co. still once again. If you're interested in that, it's at uh, copperstillco.com. You just don't get better than that, man. Now, I will say that uh, because I've been using a lot more corn in my bins, I'm getting a lot. Uh, I'm getting like five gallons less of mash. This is like 15 gallons. Up here would be about 20. That'd be about 23. So I'm getting a little less out of a run. But uh, basically, I need bigger bins. So I'm gonna have to uh, upgrade and, uh, but the more corn, the better the liquor. Once it heats about 200, right before you start running, running liquid out, you won't back her down to about 11. 10.4 is good, but uh, you're starting to make vapor. You feel the heat, it's not quite here yet. But once it gets here and then it gets over to here, then you'll be running. All right, that, uh, that run, I got a couple gallons. I, uh, we already drank a couple jars. Um, had a rough night after I ran that. <laughs> Never finished the video up yet. We drank the shit out of some of this and, uh, didn't get a, as much mash as I should have because my container, I need bigger containers if I'm going to run that much corn. Even though the corn is, you know, it's concentrated 
It's awesome. This smells and tastes great. Um, this was yellow dent corn. But using that amylase like that, it, it, you know, it helps. Comes out tasting a little bit better than it normally would. Average guy can't tell the difference. But if you drink this every day, you'll be able to tell a little bit difference. You get just a little bit better of uh, a uh, uh, fucking taste. And then, um, you know, it's a way, you know, even, even using corn sugar. Like if you use dextrose instead of white sugar, never use beet sugar, by the way. But, you know, if you use cane sugar and then you use dextrose, you're going to be able to tell a little bit difference in flavor. It's going to be a little bit better. Especially if you like corn liquor. If you don't like corn liquor, it doesn't matter. <laughs> you know, do what you do. But uh, I I've been trying a lot of different corns. Uh, I'm going to, uh, like I said, I'm going to make, in, make a blend of corn to where it has, you know, it takes some of the earthiness from the Indian corn, some of the robustness from the... Uh, the bloody butcher, you know, some of the sweetness from the yellow and, and I'm going to make an awesome recipe and that, that's what I'm trying to accomplish right now. I'm trying to make a super delicious corn liquor and then I'm going to make a super delicious bourbon. That, that's why I run all these different kinds of corn. Plus, you know, traditionally that's what most people use to make moonshine. Um, Hope you like my video. I hope it helped you understand about amylase and how amylase works. And if you having trouble finding it, go to uh, brokenbonesdistillery.com. I think that's a, the, I'll put a link in the description. If you guys want some amylase, some great guys over there, they got some amylase for you. Um, Shua and Prohibition, we'll take care of you. Um, that's all I got. I hope you like my video. See y'all later.